Let's read it together, and I want you to read it as if you're reading it for the first time. Are you ready? Verse 1, here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you're thankful you got a shepherd, give him a big praise. What a journey we have been on through Psalms 23. So much has been revealed to me over this last month, things that I had never seen before. But that's, that's why you read and you study the Word of God, because unlike any other book that you read, this one's alive. And you can read the same, pas same passage for 15 years and go back and all of a sudden it says something you've never seen before because it's living and there are two ways to interpret the word of God that's logos that's the written word but every now and then the anointing hits I mean the whole book's anointed all of God's words anointed but every now and then the anointing hits your eyes and it becomes a rhema word a right now fresh word and that's what Psalms 23 has been for this last month look at where we've been we started the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have a shepherd. And thank God for that because I'm a sheep. And sheep aren't too smart. Sometimes we can be dumb. I am one, I know. And we can get ourselves in trouble, but the good news is we have a shepherd. In fact, do you know what one of the greatest shepherd passages is in all the Word of God? It's found in John chapter 10. You've probably quoted it, never even knowing it was about sheep. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what Jesus was saying. That was a shepherd scripture. That was talking about his protection of us. That he's, even when we don't see the enemy coming, we've got a shepherd. Even though the enemy's coming to steal, to kill, and destroy, we got a shepherd that's come that we may have a life and have it more abundantly. That next week we got into this, I will not lack, I will overflow. I will not lack any good thing, I will overflow. That I don't serve El Chipo just enough. I serve El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. That he doesn't just do whatever I can think or ask. He does exceeding abundantly above all that I could ever think or even ask. Because he is that shepherd and my cup overflows. We talked about what it's like to face fear. And how it... It doesn't do any good to look at somebody and say, it's all in your head. Well, I'm facing it. Don't tell me it's not real. It's real. What I'm afraid of is real. But I don't have to fear it because the who that is with me is greater than the what that is coming against me. I got a who that's greater than any what. And we're going to go back to a little bit of verse 4, but actually verse 5 is where we're going to camp out. I, I wanted to go straight to the end. You know that goodness and mercy part and that house part, house of the Lord. And I wanted to talk about that, and I wanted to call this message, Don't Miss the Finale, thinking about the firework explosion next Sunday. But, but here, was, here was what God said to me to say to you, sit down. Look at somebody and tell them, sit down. This is not a good time to walk out of the sanctuary. Sit 
down. Because up until this point, man, it has just been blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Green pastures, still waters. He's telling me to lay down and rest. And while I am, he's restoring my soul. He's leading me in paths of righteousness. And all I got to do is keep following him. And then all of a sudden, I find myself in the depths of this dark valley. The shadow of death is hovering over me. Fear is standing against me. And if that wasn't enough, I get to the bottom of this valley, and now there's not just an enemy, but there are enemies coming against my life. Here's what I've learned. The quality of my life is determined by how well I handle what I didn't see coming. The quality of your life is determined by how well you handle the things that you didn't see coming. There have been things and there are going to be things that will hit your life and you, there was no prediction, there was no prophecy, there was no indication that they were coming. They hit you out of nowhere. And there are some people that these things will hit them and their life will fall apart and the quality of their life will fall apart. But there will be others that handle well what they didn't see coming. And God comes to us and, and look, when we read Psalms 23, we have the benefit of reading the whole chapter. We get to see every step along the way. See, we read Psalms 23 and we're not going to want, we know there's green pastures, still water. We know all this stuff, the valley. We're going to go into a valley, but I'm not going to fear. Rod and staff are with me. And, and then preparing a table, anointing my head, cups overflowing. Goodness and mercy are following me. I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, and it's easy to read Psalms 23 because we see each step along the way. But that's not how God usually speaks to us. See, when God talks to us, he speaks like this. I am your shepherd, and you're going to dwell in my house forever. He doesn't tell you anything you're going to face in between the follow me and the house forever part. Because if God brought you down to the altar and said, now here's what's going to happen. You're going to follow me, and we're going to go through some tough times. You'd say, you know what, Lord? I think I'll handle this on my own. I think I'll choose my own way. I think I'll do it my own way. But if you knew the way, you wouldn't need a shepherd. And God is never going to create for you a life where he is not necessary. God is never going to bless you to the point that you don't need him. He wants you to follow him every step of the way, but he doesn't tell us what we're going to face along the way. He gives us the destination. He just doesn't tell us everything we're going to go through to get there. And then everything is good. It's easy to follow. Man, we got, we got green pasture Christians in this room. Still water Christians in this room. Lay down Christians in this room. Paths of righteousness. I mean, those, those are the easy times to follow God. But then you got hit. Unexpectedly. Shadow, fear. Enemies, I didn't see any of this coming, God. And I'm up here and I'm preaching and this praise team, they're jumping around and singing and they start talking about, we're going to the house. Let's go to the house. Oh, it's so good. Just get in the house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And you're sitting out there saying, did, did I miss a turn? Because you keep telling me about this house, but I'm in a valley. Where's the good stuff, Pastor? I mean, where, where's it? Can we go back to the green pastures and the still waters? I didn't know there was going to be a valley of difficulty. I didn't know there was going to be enemies. I didn't know fear was waiting on me and death was waiting on me and depression and all these things were coming, coming against me. Where's the good stuff? Could it be that the only reason you got hit was because you were heading 
to something better than what you already had? Could it be that the devil hit you in the middle because he knew, he knew you were about to transition into another level of blessing and strength and power and anointing that you've never experienced before. Oh, it's just been fields and water up to this point. But when I get on the other side of this, there's an anointing on my head and cups are overflowing and goodness and mercy are following me. Here's a big idea. Trust takes you to the house, but trust is always tried. And he gave you a season of blessing. That's what the first three verses were about. That was just a season to prepare you for the valley you were going to walk through. Are you using your season? Some of you aren't using your season because you think seasons last forever. Walk outside. Try and control the season. Try and say, fall, you ain't coming this year. Fall doesn't care about your opinion. Winter doesn't ask if you're ready. When that season is over, the next one shows up. And if you are in a season of blessing right now, it's God preparing you for the next season of trial you're about to go into. Use your season. And it's here to prepare me for the season that I'm going into of trusting. A valley? How can God be good and lead me into a valley? How could God ever put me in a place where I'm outnumbered, I'm outgunned, I'm overrun, I wasn't ready, he didn't, he didn't warn me, he just took me right into it. And now the enemy has showed up in the valley on the heels of my victory of fear. Here comes this army against me the devil doesn't fight fair he doesn't let you have a victory and then back off and say okay you got me no when you get one victory he multiplies and comes back with a whole army there are people in this room right now that got delivered from fear last Sunday that had to fight armies on Monday Things you didn't even see coming. Things you can't even explain and hitting you. And it'd be one thing if the devil would fight fair and come at your face. But he comes at you from every side. 360 degrees. He is pressing in on you. Some of you are in a battle today. A spiritual battle. How do I know if I'm in a spiritual battle? Here are some signs that you're in a spiritual battle. Number one, physical fatigue. You can recognize spiritual fatigue, but what about physical fatigue? Why are you so tired all the time? I can't understand it. I just can't even get the energy to get up. I can't get the energy to move. Nothing's changed. My diet hasn't changed. My routine's not changed. But I just don't even have the strength to go forward. Anxiety is a sign. Temptation. Strong temptation amplified temptation it's as if you can't look anywhere without the devil bringing this temptation in front of your face despair despair is a hopelessness I'm starting to I'm starting to lose hope that it's ever going to get any better and you think the valley is is the end of your story confusion you don't know why but you just can't get your thoughts together. You want things to make sense, but nothing makes sense. You tried this work last time, but now it's just confusion. And it's a confusion in my mind, confusion at my job, confusion in the marriage, confusion in my children. I need to remind somebody, God is not the author of confusion. So if there is confusion swirling in your life, God didn't bring it. And then finally, lies. Whispering in your ear, you are worthless. You deserve this valley. You'll never make it out of this valley. God has abandoned you in this valley. And these lies start swirling in your mind and you are being attacked. And it would be one thing if, if you had to battle anxiety. But anxiety with fatigue? Fatigue with confusion? 
confusion with lies, lies with temptation. And you want to fight, you just don't know which direction to fight in. And so you come to church and you come down to the altar and you say, God, stop the battle. But he doesn't stop the battle. He stops you. No, 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 God, you didn't hear what I asked you for. I asked you, God, I'm fighting on every side. God, I don't know which way to punch. God, I don't know which way. I don't know which enemy to fight first. God, I, I need you to stop the battle that I'm in. And you hear this voice behind you. And the voice says, sit down. <laughs> sit. Sit down, God. If you see, I'm surrounded by sit down, sit down in the attack, sit down in the trial, sit down in the battle. I told you to sit down. Let me bring me a chair. Let me show you something. Michael, will you help me out? Because here's some things. I'm just going to share with you some of the things God revealed to me about this last half of Psalms 23. And I think it's going to bless some. Just sit it right there. Sit it right there. Okay. Here we go. You ready? I'm the shepherd. Mike is the sheep. Can we go through this? Psalms 23. Verse 1. Lord is my shepherd. Who's your shepherd? That's right. Did you do the right thing? There you go. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Come on. Come on, because what is your job, sheep? What is your job? That's right. Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Lay down. That's enough. Come on. He leads me beside still waters. Get you a drink. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. Sit down. In all of Psalms 23, this is the first time he's looked at me. Up until this point, all I've done is followed him. But when the army showed up, that got his attention. Not them. He doesn't pay attention to the armies. He starts looking at me. And he says, sit down. Yeah, but God, the armies. But God, I got to get up. But God, I got to fight. Sit down. I didn't ask you about them. I'm paying attention to you. You have my attention. Up until this point, all you saw was my back. But now you got my face. It took a battle to reveal your blessing. In other words, the battle triggered the blessing. And now that you're sitting down, you anoint my head with oil. And now my cup is starting to overflow. Yeah, but God, do you see the fear out there? Do you see all the things that are coming? God said, stop worrying about them. A thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 will fall at your right hand. But it shall not come nigh unto you. Why? Because you are in the secret place of the Most High. You are covered under the shadow of the... Stop worrying. I ain't watching the devil. I ain't concerned about the devil. You got my attention. I'm focused on you. Sit. Tell somebody, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, but the fear. And you know what? Every time the army pulls in and pushes in a little bit closer, there's more oil that starts getting poured out on my head. And they're vying for your attention. And I'm saying, look right here at my face. 
Because the Bible says a day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And if you get God's attention, that's God's favor. And all you got to do is get God to glance in your direction. And if a day's a thousand years, then one glance could be 20 years of favor. Well, how do I get God to look in my direction? Get into a battle. The only thing that got God's attention on me was the army coming against me. And so the devil starts pressing in. And the more he presses, the more God begins to pour out the oil. So the devil says fear hit him again depression hit him again sickness come on bring in a whole nother battalion of sickness and God said oh let them keep coming because the more that show up the more I'm gonna pour out anointing on top of you sin more lack sin more oh let them bring lap because I'm gonna cause your cup to overflow overflow keep on attacking devil because the more he fights the more I'm anointed and the more I overflow it was a battle that triggered my blood Blessing. Somebody take 10 seconds and just shout right now. And I know you're afraid. And I know you want to run. And I know you want to get out of here, but I want you to sit. You want to run, but I want you to sit. Why? Because the enemy wants to see you run. I want them to see you sit. Because if you can sit in this, it shows them that they don't have the power I know as we move into this last part, you wanted me to come up here and talk about everything that you've lost. But I came to tell you there's something greater ahead if you just sit down. If you just look at somebody and say, sit down. Don't let the devil have a greater vision for your life than you do. What I'm trying to say to you is, if he sent an army, what's the devil think about you? If he had to send an army, what's he know about your future? Man, I need somebody to put a praise on that right there. What if the devil designed the size of his attack because he knew the size of your future? And he said, I couldn't just send fear to take him out. And I couldn't just send it. I had to send an army to stop them. Sit down. Somebody lift your hands and say, the battle triggered my blessing. This battle triggered the anointing. This battle triggered an overflowing cup. I must be cursed. Look at all these bad things happening to me. No, they're happening because you're blessed. They're happening because you're going somewhere. He would have never messed with you unless he knew an anointing was waiting for you and an overflowing cup was waiting for you and there was a house where goodness and mercy were gonna follow you. He would have never messed with you. The only reason he's messing with you is cause you're blessed. Tell five people I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed. That's why I'm being battled is because I'm being blessed. That's why I'm being fought because I'm being favored. That's why. Man, I need somebody to take 20 seconds and just praise the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Sit down. Devil, you should have never messed with my children. That triggered a generational blessing. Devil, you should have never messed with my finances. That triggered, a, triggered an overflowing cup. Devil, you should have never messed with my health. Now I'm going to have a healing ministry. The healing anointing is on my life. That battle triggered God's blessing.
is a new thing. This ain't green pastures. This ain't still waters. No, when the devil hit you, it triggered a new level of blessing. This is anointing my head with oil. This is overflowing cup. This is goodness and mercy. The devil didn't know what he was unleashing when he came after me. His battle triggered my blessing. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this room right now. Come on. Somebody just needs to praise him. If you're in a battle, you need to praise him. If you're in a battle, you need to worship. If you're in a battle, is why your greatest temptation to quit will come just before your greatest breakthrough. Anointing, cup overflowing. Can I just fast forward to the end and then we're gonna shout and then we're gonna dance, we're really gonna shout. And so, come on, no, 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 you're not staying in the valley. I just set you down to anoint you. I set you down to release overflowing blessing. But we didn't come here to stay. Let's go. We going to the house. <laughs> Let's go to the house. That's why you can say I was glad when they said to me, "Let's go to the house." And so we start heading to the house. And you know David he had such a relationship with this house. David said it like this. He said, oh, that I was a bird, that I could build my nest and just live in the house. He said, better is one day in this house than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be an usher in the house than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. He said it like this. He said, one thing have I desired. <laughs> that do I seek after, that I may dwell in your house. He said, and you say, was this a building? At that time, yes, it was a building. It was a house, the house of God. But here's what he's saying. That house held the presence. And he said, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So what David is chasing after is he is chasing after the presence of God. And what is sad and there is people that came to church today and you came to a building, but you never got in the house. Because you settled for church being something you just checked off your list. You did church just to soothe your conscience. You did church just to say, I win. But there are some people who say, I don't care if it's in Forest Park. I don't care if it's in Lebanon. I don't care if it's in a tent in the middle of the field. If the presence of God is there, that's where I want to be. Because I ain't coming to a building. Give me to the presence of God. Are you thankful? Come on, you can't be a president. 
presence-driven church and do things normal. That's why we're unusual. Maybe we'll sing three songs. Maybe we'll only get to one. Maybe we'll preach or maybe we'll just lay hands. It all depends, God. When your presence shows up, that's what we came for. JC, Joey, Joey, come on up here and help me. Now watch, here we are. Almost made it. We got our, get your foot on the doorstep of the house. You're about to look, you're about to step into the house of God, the presence of God. But right before he crosses the threshold, he looks back and he says, goodness and mercy. <laughs> but watch you gotta watch what he says he said goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life see I thought that goodness and mercy just showed up when I got through the valley but here's what he's actually saying come around here guys the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want They've always been there. He makes me lie down in green pastures. They've always been there. He leads me beside the still waters. They've always been there. He restores my soul. He leads me a path of right. They never left you. You've never been alone. You've never. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, they're still there. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare. Sit down. They've always been there. This is why David said the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. They didn't just show up when you turned 57. They didn't just show up when you turned 35 and got your life right. They've been there since the day you were born. The only reason you're standing in this room today is because goodness and mercy have followed you all the days of your life. say how did I never notice it because it's only when you've been through something that you look back and you say I would have never made it had it not been the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever his goodness and mercy have been with me I need somebody if you can say I'm standing here today because of goodness and mercy I didn't die in that car wreck because of goodness and mercy drugs didn't take me out because of goodness and mercy I should have died I should have lost my mind I should have given in to fear I should have thrown in the towel but just when I wanted to go back goodness and mercy goodness and mercy goodness somebody take 30 seconds and praise him in this place even know what God kept from you because they were trying to get to you but goodness sickness that wanted to get to you but goodness and mercy said not today not today goodness and mercy give it praise is coming. Sit down. Overflow is coming. Sit down. And look what all God's already brought you through and he ain't about to leave you.
David goes on to say, I surely would have died had it not been for the goodness of God. And after all this, I'm going to dwell in your house. This is the first time that there is a word that has been used that is not indicating movement. Everything up until this point, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Yea, though I walk through. But this is the first time that God says, now in my house, put down your stakes. This is where you're going to abide forever. In case anybody tries to get in, I got two bouncers at the door. Goodness and mercy are standing guard over my children. Goodness and mercy. Lord, sing goodness and mercy to school with my children. Lord, put goodness and mercy at every door of my house, Lord. So I don't know what you're fighting today, but if you are in a battle, would you just lift your hands and just say, God, I thank you. This battle just triggered my blessing. Sit down. And I used to think, I used to, I used to think that he was making me sit down in the valley. But then I read Ephesians 2. And he has caused us and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God said when you were in the valley, you were looking up at your enemy. But when you got my attention, I'm giving you a new seat. And you're about to look down on what you've been looking up at. And I'm anointing you. And I'm overflowing you. And when you get through this, you're going to look back and you're going to see it wasn't you that made it. Goodness and mercy have been trailing you. I'm telling you, I just feel such a, a worship in this house. Somebody just needs to thank God for the goodness and mercy. Somebody needs to lift your hands and say, Lord, I wouldn't be here right now if it were not for your goodness and for your mercy. And after all you brought me through, why would I ever want to go anywhere else but be in your presence because in your presence is fullness of joy thank you for the anointing thank you for the overflowing cup thank you that I have a shepherd I have a shepherd thank you Lord
and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace as your presence now fills this place Anthony you may not know this song but I just feel I want to sing the chorus just one time and then we're going to pray for the teachers but this song says, if you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. You can take this world all its way and riches I don't need her things it's my desire to live for him can I sing it one more time if you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I didn't just end up at the house I didn't just show up at the house one day. There were valleys, there were shadows, there were enemies, there were armies. Then you would know the reason why I love him so. You can take this world, all its wealth and riches, cause I don't need earth's things. It's my desire to live for Him. Are you living for Him? Is He your shepherd? If He's not, I want to lead you in a simple prayer. prayer that, pray this with me and He can be your shepherd before you leave this place. Stop trying to navigate these valleys on your own. You'll never make it out, but if you have a shepherd, he'll lead you through. Pray with me. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I need a shepherd. Forgive me of all of my sins. Erase my past. Jesus, I believe you are the good shepherd. You laid down your life so that I could be saved. But you arose. Today, I want to live for you for the rest of my life. Dwell in your presence. In your name I pray. Amen.